Boa Vista is in the northeast of Brazil, nine degrees south of the equator. It is a flat plain situated a few hundred meters above sea level. Sandstone ridges, pinnacles and mesas rise steeply above the plain. The population of wild bearded capuchin monkeys we studied inhabits a transition area between Cerrado and Kachinga, a seasonally dry savanna-like region. The wet season begins in October and lasts seven months. Intense thunderstorms are frequent. Overall, more than one meter of rain falls. In the dry season, the temperature can rise above 40 degrees with humidity as low as 15% and for five months, there is almost no rain. Capuchins reduce their activity in the hottest part of the day to save energy and water. At this time of the year, they often spend the hottest hours in cool caves, which helps them to regulate their body temperature. The aeolic erosion, that is the erosion from the wind, creates these comfortable sites in the cliffs. Shady areas and sand bathing provide relief against the heat. At this time, finding water becomes a challenge. Though the dry season in other areas is associated with lower food supplies for monkeys, in Fazenda Boa Vista the availability of fruits and seeds does not differ between the wet and dry seasons. In contrast, invertebrates are more abundant in the wet season and their abundance is positively correlated with rainfall. Females in Fazenda Boa Vista feed on high quality foods the whole year. Here, the average interbirth interval, which reflects food availability, is 22 months. Eight months shorter than in capuchin monkeys living in the Atlantic forest of the Carlos Botello State Park. Moreover, two pairs of twins born here survived the weaning age. This event is very rare in nature and provides further proof that in this habitat there is plenty of food. Play is very common. This behavior increases when food is abundant. All things considered, these privileged monkeys can afford to rest a lot and pursue leisure activities during the day. In the present millennium, it was discovered that wild capuchins use tools habitually. Most of the evidence comes from Fazenda Boa Vista field site. Here, they use stone tools to crack palm nuts and other encased food items. Systematic observation of two groups of bearded capuchins revealed that most of them used stone tools. Adult males cracked nuts more often than did adult females. This difference is particularly evident for high-resistance nuts. 
sexual dimorphism in body mass is evident. In fact, males' body mass exceeds females by 60%. Youngsters are less proficient than adults. Both field and experimental data demonstrate that body mass is responsible for much of the difference. Resistance of the nuts also significantly affects how many an individual cracks and how many strikes it takes to crack one of them. In this habitat, palm nuts are abundant. Field assistant Marino Junior de Oliveira shows the most common ones. Quatro espécies diferentes de coco: catulé, yassava, catuli e tupum. É uma das principais fontes de alimentos do, dos macacos que moram aqui no cerrado. The low resistant ones are the tucum and the catulé. The high resistant ones are the piassava and the catuli. Keep in mind that even the low resistant ones are more than 10 times harder than walnuts. Not surprisingly, hammers of specific lithology weight are necessary to break palm nuts. The sandstones, so common in Fazenda Boavista, are friable and easy to break when he used as hammers. Therefore, capuchins have to find durable and effective hard stones such as quartzite and siltstone that are very difficult to find in this environment. Overall, capuchins use stone hammers that weigh about one kilo, but they can try to use stones that are heavier than they can lift easily. The load is so heavy that this young male can raise it at best to shoulder level. This height is not enough to crack a high-resistant piassaba nut. Larger individuals manage to raise the stone higher so as to increase the force of their strikes. By the way, in a field experiment, 11 capuchins and one human were given the same one and a half kilo quartzite stone and the man needed almost the same number of strikes as the most efficient capuchin to crack the piassava nut. The dominant male, who weighs more than four kilos, adds force on the downward face of the strike. Males are able to apply twice the kinetic energy to the stone in the downward face as compared to females. Because of her smaller body size and shorter arms, the female raises the same stone only to chest level. She needs three strikes to succeed, whereas the male needs only one. In most episodes, the monkeys use the hammer stone already present on the anvil and transport only the nut. In fact, striking the nut and transporting the stone have high energetic costs. However, using tools allows the monkeys to eat foods that they could not otherwise obtain, and these foods have a lot of calories. More rarely, despite the energetic cost, they transport both the nut and the hammer stone to the anvil. Is tool use in Fazenda Boavista necessary for survival? Apparently not. In this site, food is abundant throughout the year and Capuchin's monthly rate of cracking nuts does not reflect the availability of fruits and invertebrates. They use tools opportunistically, as nutritious encased foods become available.
As are other primates, bearded capuchin monkeys are social animals. This infant is a few days old. Its umbilical cord is still attached and it will fall off soon. At birth, infants cling transversely across the mother's shoulders. Gestation lasts about five months. Newborns spend a lot of time sleeping. At this age, the mother is the only caretaker. On the one hand, nothing seems to bother the newborns. They cling to their mother's fur and not even the up and down movements and the noise produced by her pounding actions waken them. On the other hand, mothers continue to perform potentially risky activities. They keep moving on cliffs just as they did before. When infants are small, group members often approach them and smack their lips to make a soft sound, an affiliative behavior. The mother is responsible for keeping the infant close to her during the first months of life. Infants explore the environment each time for a longer period before going back to their mother. Young infants nurse at any time. On average, weaning is essentially completed at 15 months. Older infants still follow the mother looking for an occasion to nurse. They succeed less and less often as they get older. Independent locomotion and weaning are gradual processes. From the second month on, the infant is sometimes carried by other group members. Young capuchins of both sexes and relatives in general look for occasions to carry infants and interact with them. Infants are at ease when they are with someone else than their mother. When the separation lasts too long, they may become distressed. The infant's vocalizations and facial expressions indicate that this is the case. Typically, Resting and play occur at midday when foraging gradually comes to an end. Social play often alternates with object play. Older individuals adjust their style and strength to the level of younger play partners. Play mostly occurs among youngsters. But adults also play. Here, a nursing female is busy playing with a subadult male. Capuchins in Fazenda Boa Vista play often. This possibly is due to the abundance and the high quality of the food present in this area compared to what is available in other habitats. These four or five months old infants are hanging by their tails as they play smoothly together. Scientists still debate what play is for. These juvenile males use a tree to make their play particularly exciting. The trunk allows them to partially hide from each other's view while running around it. The aim of playing is not to win, but to keep playing. The green stems of the Burici palm are slippery and cool. A young capuchin has encountered an oblique stem on his path and has invented a game never observed before by researchers. He uses the stem as slide. He 
he walks up and then slides down. Young males play more than young females who are more keen on grooming activities. Youngsters play far more often than adults. Although it is common for an adult to join the team. Play is difficult to define but easy to recognize. It has no evident immediate functional consequences but appears to be pleasurable to the participants. Sometimes capuchins have dirty faces. It is because they play in a rough and tumble way in sandy caves. Here a female who is heavily pregnant starts grooming a younger female. Though grooming serves to remove debris and parasites from their fur and skin, it is also a powerful means to keep good relationships with other group members. Now the same female switches grooming partner. Females perform and receive more grooming than subordinate males while the dominant male receives quite the same amount of grooming he performs. Females preferentially groom infants, especially their own. This is an important element of maternal care since young capuchins do not groom themselves. In Fazenda Boavista, capuchins have a rigid hierarchy of dominance. The alpha male is dominant to all group members, including the alpha females. The alpha female has a higher rank than the other males. 